Hi, right, this is your boy Amar. I'm still here at Anime NYC at the Jacob Javits Center 2021. And I'm here with a very special guest. He's amazing. He's one of the brightest talents at Udon Entertainment. He's the one and only. Uh, Iron Pinky. AKA Edward. How are you doing, Edwin? How are you doing, man? I'm doing good, doing good, man. How about you? I'm great, man. It's good to see you again, man. Yeah, dude. It's been like two years, one year and a half. Yeah, it's been pretty damn long. Yep. So, uh, what do you have going on that's new, man? Please tell us. Uh, I've just been doing uh, concept art for PCS Toys, and I'm also still working on some Udon stuff. Been working on, I think, the next summer issue. Nice, man. Nice, man. Is it like a beach issue or a swimsuit issue? A uh, swimsuit issue, yeah. It's going to feature a pro a mostly Street Fighter, and I'm thinking maybe some other stuff. Maybe Rival Schools. Maybe uh, Final Fight. We'll see. Capcom Properties. That's cool, man. That's cool, man. So what are you selling here today at, at NYC Anime Fest? Uh, well, I came unprepared, but uh, I was selling a lot of prints. Most of them sold out. But uh, Show a little bit for the camera, man? Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. Woo! Yeah, you can lift it up, man. Hold on. Yeah, dude, it's kind of a... Uh, Kind of weird angle, right? So we're going to start again from the beginning, and we're going to discuss each piece. So we're going to oh, Krillin and number eighteen. So how did you create this bad boy? Uh, they're just my favorite couple by far. Uh, I kind of grew up liking them, so they've they've stuck around, yeah. Okay, okay. Solid couple too. Okay, okay. Oh, you got Chung Lee on the, the the bicycle, and you got Chung Lee in the gym. That's beautiful, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. You got um, oh Android 18 again, Morrigan. Woo. You got wow. This is one crazy looking fucking jam, and you got the Marvel versus Capcom stuff going on. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, S and K. Yeah, I'm just a big fan of fighting games, dude. Yeah, I uh, grew up, uh, grew up playing them in the '90s and early 2000s. Great. You got Magical Girl from Yu-Gi-Oh. You got Samus from Metroid. With armor and without, that's beautiful, man. That's very beautiful. Thank you, thank you. And unfortunately, this is the end of the road, and the end of the road spells the Midnight Carnival. Yeah, this, uh, the last one is Eno. Uh, I recently picked up Guilty Gear Strive, and she's my favorite character. Nice, nice, nice. Um, are you working on any of your own creative own properties? Uh, yes, I am, but I have nothing to announce until maybe mid next year. Mid -next so I'll have something. I'll have something around next year. Next year? Yeah. Okay. Well, Eddie, I mean, thank you so much for being here, man. And hopefully your credit own project, is it like a fantasy um, story? Uh, yeah, more or less. Yeah, it's, uh, it's based around some characters I've been building for about like the last five years. Nice, nice. I've been working on some of my characters for the last ten years. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the story of a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, it's something hopefully I can get out in a year and a half. We'll see. And it's, been kind of, it's been kind of affected by the whole pandemic with uh, shipping and all that stuff. So it's been kind of tough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're not the only one... Um, Unfortunately, I have to deal with the whole shipping situation. Uh, hopefully, things will get better for all of us. And, uh, you know, um, oh, I see you got a new logo going on, Iron Pinky. So, please tell us a little, a little bit about that. Oh, dude, it's just my persona that I use usually for anime conventions. Uh, I go by my real name, Edwin, for more of the superhero stuff or published work. But when I'm doing anime shows, I just, I just go by Iron Pinky. Okay, okay. That's cool, man. That's cool, man. Well, Edwin, thank you so much for your time and energy. And... Uh, Hopefully, you know, you get to put out your book once the pandemic is over and things will look better and things will look up, too. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you dropping by, man. I, thank you. And I appreciate you being here because I didn't know who else to talk to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, uh, we'll see you, Edwin. Are you coming back next year? Hopefully. If they have me, definitely, yeah. All right. You heard what the man said. He'll be here next year, hopefully. As long as they have him, we're good to go. Thank you, Edwin, for everything. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. All right. Have a great day. Hey, how you guys doing? I'm still here at Anime NYC, and I have a very special guest right behind me. You're wondering who this gentleman is. Who 
Bowie is he? What's so special about him? What makes him so fucking dynamic that I must interview him? I have to. I got to interview him. Well, I'm going to tell you all. I'm going to tell you all about him, but not right now. I'm not going to tell you about. Him. He's going to tell you all about himself. I'm talking about. I'm here with the most, one of the most dynamic voice actors in the fucking business. I'm talking about the one only Lex Lang. How you doing, Lex? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Wow, he's using the sexy voice. <laughs> I want to say thank you so much for being here today, man. It's a pleasure. I've waited a long time to finally meet you in person, because it's easy to see you online, but meeting in person that's a different story. Um, my audience members may not know about you. Um, please tell, me, tell them a little bit about your origin story when it comes to acting. All right. Well, hey, everybody. It's Lex. Nice to meet you and see you guys online here. Um, I've been an actor my whole life. I started in grade school and in high school I was in all the plays. In college, stayed with plays, did, did stand-up comedy. Just the love of acting. And then eventually one day somebody said, hey, you'd be a great voice actor. It happened to be Amy Jo Johnson, who was the Pink Power Ranger at the time. This is 25 years ago, and since then I've been playing all kinds of characters. I've been in animation, anime, video games, TV, movies, all that kind of stuff. Some of the characters you might know me uh, from anime is uh, Kenshiro from Fist of the North Star. Uh, something that's a little more current is uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. I play uh, Geito. Uh, if you were a kid and loved the uh, Digimon series, I'm War Greymon. So I'm War Greymon. So's in the Fire Lord and, and Avatar the Last Airbender. And of course, Dr. Neo Cortex in the Crash Bandicoot series. And uh, a million more. I've done a, all kinds of shows, Batman and uh, you know, a variety of different things. Over 400 credits. So um, what was it like for you to create your very, f what was the hardest voice acting job for you? So one of the hardest voice acting jobs was a, a game called Evolve. And I played a character named Torvald in that, half man, half uh, cyborg kind of thing. And uh, I had to scream at the top of my lungs 1,800 lines. So we did it in three days because after you scream, I don't know if you've you know, tried it ever, but if you scream really loud three or four times, you can lose your voice pretty quick. Yeah. And so for me, it was uh, 1,800 lines. And by the end of the session, I sounded like I was 90 years old. I was like, all right, well, I'll see you guys tomorrow. You know, it was one of those kind of things. Yeah, so that was the toughest. So I, I got to ask about it. Um, first of all, I got to ask about uh, Fist of North Star, then Digimon, because I love both properties. I have all the box sets at home. Okay. You know, I'm keeping them in pristine condition because one day I want to pass it on to children, my kids, if I have some. Um, so what was it like for you to um, step in John Vickery's shoes um, playing Ken Shiro? Well, it was really, really fun. You know, I had to audition like anybody else, of course. But when I got it, I was just so in, enthralled with the show itself. I thought the character was, like, super cool. You know, he's looking for Lynn, of course, through the majority of that. What's that? Oh, you, oh Yulia. Yulia. Yeah, Lynn's his girlfriend. Okay, right. Oh, wait a minute. He's looking for Yulia, but he's... he's the reason I'm thinking Lynn is because my wife, who's also a voice actress, is Sandy Fox. And she plays Lynn. So we were, it was always like, Lynn, Ken, Lynn, Ken. They, they call back and forth to each other a lot in that show. So sorry. Yeah. So, but anyway, I thought it was cool the fact that he was so reserved and so like laid back and cool about his own power that, you know, obviously the, the big line, you're already dead. You know, like that's, that's like the big line. But the fact that he can just like touch somebody and it like hits all the points that makes their head explode and all that. It was a really cool show, and it was fun, too, because we got to watch the original Japanese and sort of, he has a little bit of that Bruce Lee, -da -da -da! you know, like that kind of stuff going on, well, the watas. Here's the thing, though. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go here's ahead. Here's the thing, like, I really love, I thought that was actually a recording of you, of, of someone else saying it for you, so you don't have to say it. Oh, like, what? Yeah. And, um, well, when I look at Fist of North Star, it's a combination, to me, it's a combination of Mad Max, Bruce Lee, and um, Rocky. Because I noticed um, Ken Shiro's face looks exactly like Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> and you know, but, you know, don't sue them. And I really, I really did enjoy the show. I mean, I, I just wish that they completed the series with you, yeah. because uh, like fifty-two episodes, I think. Originally, we we're gonna, hey, Zuggie, you're already dead. No, it's just it's like <laughs> Stallone there. But anyway, yeah, it's fun show. Um, also, what was it like for you to work on Digimon? 
because that show, I love that show way more than Pokemon. The first season, I have the box set, WarGreymon, WarGarurumon, Anjimon, like all that. Was was WarGreymon the only character you played? No, I played, uh, let's see, do I have, I don't have it in here anymore. Um, you know, it's funny, I don't, there's the main character I played. I don't remember all the incidentals, but a lot of times what we'll do is we go in to record, let's say, WarGreymon. And they book us for two hours, but War Greymon may only have 20 lines in that show. So they have us, and because they have us, they say, oh, would you play this one character or like the host of a game show or whatever it might be in the show? And so we often do play three, up to three or four characters in one show. So that happens a lot. So I probably played maybe 20 characters in the whole series, but the main one was War Greymon, you know. And you know what was cool? What's really cool for me as a voice actor is it made a difference in so many people's lives. Like they'd come home, it was like a lot of people's childhoods. You know, they'd come home, they'd make a bowl of cereal or whatever after school and just watch it. Or it might be Saturday morning cartoons for them. Like Fox Kids had it on Saturday mornings for a while. And then it went to ABC. So like depending on when you started watching, it depends on whether it was afternoon or morning on Saturday. But it was. Uh, it's, it makes a difference to me when people come up and they say, "Oh man, that got me through," or "War Greymon made me feel so good." Whatever. You know, that's that's where I get my most satisfaction uh, being part of the show. And that is why I interview guys like him because of that same satisfaction. You made everyone's lives better, cooler, and amazing. And I have to say a very big thank you because without voice actors like you, I wouldn't know what the hell to do with myself. <laughs> Well, thank you. I appreciate that so much. You're really an inspiration going around talking to people and doing this for the fans and your friends. Well, I only interview the voice actors that matter the most because guys like you have a lot of, imp have a lot of positive impact. You have great influence. So, yes, you're definitely worth seeing, worth spending time with, and worth having on camera because you, you made so many lives better. That's just the truth. Oh, thank you so much. I'm really grateful. Grateful for you and for everybody who's watched too. So, if Lex, if somebody wants to book you in the future, for, say for a potential project, how should they go about um, reaching out to you? Uh, my email, it's real easy, Lex at lexlang.com. That's simple. Or just go to lexlang.com and it says contact, and there's a variety of ways you can contact me. Well, you heard what the man said. Go to lexlang.com. That's the best way to reach out to him. Lex Lang, thank you so much for your time, man. Thank you so much for being here. You really made my um, weekend awesome. And I hope to see you here next year again. And I hope there's a long line waiting for you. Thank you. I do too. <laughs> Thank you. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. All right. There's your boy Amari. I'm still here at Anime NYC. And, and you're wondering who's the gentleman standing in front of me and standing in front of my camera. Well, we're about to find out. And he's about to tell us what he's all about and what he's promoting, what he's selling here today. I'm here with this group called Ray Comics. And we're going to learn all about them. And um, you're the... You're the head of the company, right? I'm a writer. How's everybody doing? My name is TJ Serling. I'm the present lead artist of Ray Comics. And um, I want to tell you guys about my amazing comic book series, Joystick Angels and Okamas. If you step onto our website, Ray Comics. Well, let me learn a little bit about your origin story first. Yeah. We got to break them in. We got to break them in slowly. So um, please, how did you get your start with comics and art? Absolutely. I mean, I've been drawing comics ever since I was little. I mean, I just love sequential storytelling. I think I first got onto comics through Looney Tunes and then obviously Super Friends right afterwards. But yeah, man, I grew up in the 90s loving comic books, comic book stories, going to the comic shop. Uh, but yeah, man, and then slowly over the years taking art classes, going to art school, getting a degree in art, and then eventually interning and working with Marvel. Okay, okay. So what was it like to work on your first book with Marvel Comics? Um, it's actually really incredible. I mean, it's just kind of a lifelong dream to work with them in some capacity. And um, shortly after that, I started my own comic book company because I really wanted to increase the uh, diverse representation in comics by telling my own unique stories. So, in other words, Marvel wasn't telling the stories people needed to see or hear. And it wasn't really all that great to begin with anyway. Um, well, I mean, I think they're, they're great in their own right, but I think if you really want, you know, down-to-earth, authentic stuff that's homegrown, then you come to independent creators. Okay, okay. So, um, tell us about uh, one, well... Whatever book you want to discuss first, please let us know a little bit about it. Not too much. You know, you don't want to give away all the magic. 
true. That's true. So uh, first, I'd love to tell you guys about my series, Joystick Angels. Joystick Angels is a YA space opera title centered on five young space pilots of color trying to save the universe from an evil alien empire. If you guys like Gardens of the Galaxy, Star Wars, Star Trek, you're going to love this. Issue one is only $10 here at the show and on my website, raycomics.com, R-A-E-comics.com. And what about Okibus? Yeah, Okimus is a sci-fi martial art action story about a young man of color that has a latent superhuman ability that could potentially save the human race. And he's being pursued by warriors from the future that want to steal that power for their own evil purposes. So time travel, martial art, action, sci-fi. And last but not least, where's the third one? Um, so, oh, it's actually the same series. Yeah, it's the same one. Oh, man, you had to be fooled. Uh -huh. I see you got a helmet for, for your, um, your book. Something extra. This is just us trying to build some cosplay and some physical items from the actual comic book series. Nice, 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 nice. Uh, do you have any other books that you want to promote? Um, just these two. Again, there are legacy titles. So again, I, I, I you know, just uh, suggest you guys jump on our website, raycomics.com, R-A-E comics.com. They'll love that for you guys. Uh, I'm sure you'll love the series. Okay, well, you heard what the man said. Go to raycomics.com, social media, Instagram, Facebook, the website, Twitter. All right, all right. Well, uh, thank you so much for your time, TJ. Uh, let's do this again next year. Bye-bye. Hey, how you guys doing out here? This is your boy, Mark. I'm still here at Anime NYC. You're wondering, who is this gentleman standing next to me? His favorite wet dream. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes, he's a ladies' man, number one in his field. I'm talking about the one and only Tony Oliver. How you doing, Tony? Doing really good. Thanks a lot. Wow, that's an introduction. Oh, man. <laughs> I never failed to introduce uh, one of my favorite voice actors properly. All right. Well, thanks a lot for that one. So, um, I know about you, but my audience, they don't know anything. Please um, give them a little bit of information about yourself. Well, I'm a voice actor, and I have been since the 80s. I, I started on a show called Robotech a long time ago, um, and uh, that led to uh, me going behind the scenes and writing and producing. I was the development producer and head writer for the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the first three seasons. Oh, and, shucks, man. We're going to go there. And, uh, and then when I left there, anime was exploding, so I jumped in, and that's when Lupin came along and Naruto and all the other shows I get to do. So, um, since you were there in the beginning of anime's acceptance in America, what was it like for you to work on Robotech uh, back in the early 80s? Because I bought the box set where I see the, um, the stock footage where they would have Robotech conventions, uh, they would have the, uh, the models dress up as the star of Robotech, uh, Rick, um, Rick, right? Rick, Rick Hunter, right? Yeah, like, did you ever get to go to any of those events? Yeah, I actually got to go to a couple of them. Uh, there was one in Los Angeles. The first one I went to was in Los Angeles, and uh, it was it was attached to the Star Trek conventions. So I expected to go in and 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 have a group of like thirty kids, children. And when I was introduced and I walked in the panel room, there's five hundred screaming college students losing their mind, and it was it was it was an overwhelming experience. Uh, I, I got through the panel. First time I ever experienced stage fright. It was really kind of funny because uh, I I never been in front of that many people without a script. I just had to be myself. So that was a hundred. It was a different thing. Then they escorted me out and stick me at an autograph table, and I'm sitting next to James Doohan, Scotty from Star Trek. So the whole time I'm trying to be the cool actor signing autographs while not fanboying over the guy sitting next to me because I wanted to just fanboy and talk to him about about Star Trek. So, <laughs> sure, you wanted to talk to him about Star Trek. I think you wanted to talk to him about Robotech. Well, but he didn't know Robotech, and I knew Star Trek. So, <laughs> okay, okay. So, how did you come up with the voice for Rick Hunter? Um, honestly, it was just my voice. Uh, my voice being a young person, so I was trying to be my version of a 17-year-old. And, uh, and at the time, this was my first gig, my first real voice gig. So I really didn't have any versatility yet. I didn't know how to manipulate my voice. So it was what you're hearing here, just a little higher because I was young, you know. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. I really loved um, the love triangle that you're in with Rick Hunter, Lin Min May. I forgot um, the older woman he, had, he ends up marrying. What's her name Lisa. again? Lisa. I, I couldn't stand Lin Min May because I had a girlfriend that behaved exactly like her. <laughs> she was so damn annoying. So much to the point, I had to kick her to the curb, and the funny thing was, she sent one of her friends to harass me. Her friend was an impersonating a real lawyer, and I had to squash that whole situation immediately. <laughs> well, that's different. I, <laughs> I didn't take it that seriously, but no, it was. Uh, I, I kind of had the same opinion of Min May in terms of. I, I thought that he was bad. She was bad for Rick, and, and he needed to find. And the fact that when he got together with Lisa, I thought that was a good thing. 
for, for Rick. I'm not sure it was great for the story, but it was good for Rick. I think it was both good for Rick and the story because Lisa was more mature and she was more stable in her, in her mentality, her mind. Yeah. Versus Lynn Minmay, she was all over the damn place. Yes. And she was acting like she was a spoiled little brat, and yes. which was annoying. Yes. Well, I thought so too, but I couldn't say so back then. Oh, I know, I know. I mean, she kept giving Rick blue balls every damn time he <laughs> saw her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would be frustrated too if I had a if I was meeting with a very beautiful woman and she wasn't trying to put out. Well, I guess so. Yes. <laughs> so you said uh, you started working on uh, the first three seasons of the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger. What was that like for you to work with uh, Saban and Shooky Levy? Well, so I, I'd been working for Saban for a few years at that point, so I was just part of the development team. I, it was my turn, I, so I got lucky and got to be the guy to do it. Um, Shuki came into the picture a little bit later after we'd already did the pilot and stuff like that, because he had actually left the company for a little while. He was just taking a break after many years of producing a lot of stuff. And um, so it was, uh, working with Saban was great. I, I got a lot of support there. It, it, it was a tough place to work because a lot was expected. Oh yeah, because I, I found out there was an unaired pilot online where um, there was uh, Mark DeCasso's, uh, Miguel Nunez as their, some of the original Power Rangers. Like they were originally called Galaxy Rangers, but they couldn't use that because that was used by another um, property. I have no idea what you're talking about. I've never seen or heard of any of that. Yeah, uh, Mark DeCasso's, like, there was a, a promotional um, video they made for Power Rangers, but they called it Galaxy Rangers. The only one that I know of was a, was a pilot for a version of Rangers based on Ultraman. And uh, I did see that one. In fact, I used, when I, when I put together Power Rangers, I used the, the character relationships from that pilot and just plopped them in. The only thing we did is change one name and kept that stuff. But uh, maybe that's the same thing. Well, no, I, I know the, 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 the first original pilot, I mean, the raw original pilot, I should say, is that when they came out, um, you had uh, Zach, Trini, and what's it? Oh, Zordon was called Zoltar or something? That was, pri we, we, we never got there. Uh, in the pilot, we changed all that before we finished the pilot. So yeah. uh, Zoltar was the original name. They were also going to be Megazoids and that stuff. But the problem was that Zoltar was owned by the movie Big, and Zoids was owned by Mark Luke, uh, by De uh, uh, Lucas, Lucas Films. Oh, I thought it was owned by um, Takara Takomi because there is an anime property out there called Zoids. Yeah, well, they that was that predates that. Yeah. Uh, but the but the the terms anything with a Zoid attached to it was was being uh, claimed by Lucas Films at the time, and we just didn't want to fight that. Gotcha, gotcha. I also was told that you're the voice of Saba, the White Ranger sword. So. Please tell us a little bit about, like, how did you uh, create the voice for Saba and, like, what, what was his, his characteristics? Well, the, the, he was a short-term character, so we didn't want to spend too much time. And there was an actor named Ted Lehman who, had, who played Exodor on Robotech. And um, he, I wanted him to play Saba. And so I went looking for him, but he had retired and uh, moved to Kentucky to take care of his mother. And, um, and uh, so I, I was talking to the casting, you know, the, the producers and... And, and uh, well, they said, well, what does he sound like? So, so I did my version of Ted Lehman. And they went, that's great. You're an actor. You do it. And that's really how I got the part. And it's me imitating Ted Lehman being a nice British person, you know. And that was it. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, are you working on anything currently right now? Yeah, I'm working on uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I'm directing that. I direct mostly these days. So I'm directing, voice directing that. Uh, voice direct, uh, voice direct, I think I can talk about this. The new Lupin, well, no, you're not the one that gets to say so. The production companies do. Um, I, uh, Lupin the third, the episode, the sixth season. Uh, we just got done uh, recording, uh, dubbing the first season, which has never been dubbed of Lupin the third. Wow. And, uh, and I direct Beyblade for Disney XD, so that's what I'm doing. Oh, you work for the mouse. Okay, that's, I respect that. I put shows on the mouse. I don't work for the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked for the mouse once or twice, and, and they can be tough to work with, work for. The mouse has very high standards. Yes, they do. Because <laughs> yeah, I've heard the stories, and I know they're all true. My, look, as a consumer, uh, Disney is my favorite. Uh, as a producer, it's, uh, it's hard and, and necessarily so. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, <clears throat> well, Tony, I want to say thank you so much for being here. Uh, I didn't know you were going to be here at all because, you know, uh, COVID, people may show up, people may not show up. Thank you really for being here, man. Thank you for being on Robotech. 
Um, what's going on with the Robotech property now uh, with Harmony Gold? I have no idea. I'm an actor. I'm the last guy to know. Last I heard, they were waiting for Sony to make up their mind uh, as to whether they were going to actually make the live action pe feature uh, so they could decide whether to continue on Shadow Chronicles or not. But that's second and third hat information. So. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, if they do make a live action, would, it, would they make it most likely a live action international cast or like all Japanese cast? I don't know. You'd have to ask them. Um, um, the producer they put on it was the guy uh, that did 300. Okay. So chances are it'd be an international cast. All right. Well, you heard from Rick Hunter himself, to, a.k.a. Tony Oliver. Tony, thank you so much for being here. It truly is, is a blessing to have you on my show. And guys, I got more wonderful guests like him coming up the pipeline. Thank you, Tony. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Oh, you can take the mask off. They gotta see your pretty face. Right. I don't want you to disappoint the ladies. <laughs> hey, how are you guys doing? This is your boy Mark. I'm still here at Anime NYC. Yes, you do not see me <laughs> inside the frame because I am too short, uh, and it's obvious. And my guest right here is pretty damn tall. Damn. This man has the power to make any females. <clears throat> panties get wet with just the sound of his voice and that's a very good skill to have and it's, a, it's so such a great skill that it's, it's constantly making him a lot of money uh, without further ado the one and only Richard Epcar how you doing Richard I'm doing well how are you guys doing I'm great man thank you for being here man um, it's a pleasure to meet you finally in person thank you. I've been seeing you off camera and on camera for years through the in the privacy of my own home <laughs> Yes, there's a reason why I said that. See, Richard is well known for doing a lot of voiceover work as well as on-screen work. You have, you've probably seen one of those commercials where um, he plays a father, he's banging on his daughter's door, the boyfriend's inside, and the boyfriend has to make a great escape. Yes, I scare the hell out of him. He scares the hell out of a lot of people. Why do you be doing stuff with my daughter? <laughs> well, um, Richard, my audience don't, may not know you, but could you tell us uh, a little bit about your origin story? Yes, uh, you know, I started basically the voiceover stuff. I started in uh, Robotech, and then I went on to do Digimon, and now I'm uh, Raiden in Mortal Kombat. I'm the Joker in several Batman games, Akuma in Street Fighter, Bato in Ghost in the Shell, Joseph Sto Joestar in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and uh, literally over 600 different characters in animation, anime, and games. Oh, well, I want to get to the origin, origin story. Um, how did you become an actor? Who influenced you to become an actor? Oh, okay. Well, well, you know, it's something I, I always wanted to be as it was an actor. I, I, you know, one of the first movies that really made an impact on me was Goldfinger. I saw that when I was 15 years old and my mom had just passed away and I was kind of depressed. I went and saw that and it just really blew me away. And I thought, well, I'll either want to be a secret agent or an actor, and I thought, well, I'm way too tall to be a secret agent because they could just pick me off very easily. So I decided to become an actor, and uh, I did a lot of plays through school, and, and then I got to college, and I, I got a uh, scholarship, which paid for my tuition and everything, and did a bunch of shows there. And then I, I started, I got my, my union card on a show called Petrocelli, which they shot in Tucson, where I went to the University of Arizona there. And uh, so I came out to L.A. after that, did a bunch of soaps and TV shows, and then got into this crazy voice world, and I've been uh, working hard ever since. For the record, though, I do love Robotech. It's an amazing show. Yeah. Uh, the animation is great. The story is great. Um, you know, um, I had the box set. I had to sell it because I needed the money. Okay. But I'm going to buy it back again. I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't judge you. <laughs> But um, I heard that Sony is supposed to be making a brand new Robotech um, live action movie and also... I hope so. This has been uh, something they've been talking about for a long time. So I hope that it, it, it happens. It was going to be at Warner Brothers, now it's at Sony. So I hope so. I just hope we can get back to making some more Robotech animation. Of course, of course because I've heard the wild rumors uh, about the Shadow Chronicles where uh, Harmony Gold was trying to get it produced. I mean, they did got it produced, but... Every Japanese studio they went to, they didn't want to touch it. Yeah, yeah no, they, they went to a Korean uh, studio finally. And uh, the, I co-directed that, by the way, and uh, I play uh, Captain Vince Grant in that show. That's a, that's a great show. I really loved it. But, but, you know, we did Robotech, 
and then 20 years later we did that movie. So that's that's how long it's been since you know, and it's kind of ridiculous. I I hope that they start doing a lot more of this stuff soon, or people are going to forget about it altogether. You know. Okay. Okay. So. Um, tell us a little bit okay, about. Take it easy up there. <laughs> no, no. T uh, tell us a little bit about your on-screen um, TV appearances and film appearances. I did a lot of soaps back in the day. I was on Santa Barbara, Days of Our Lives, Young and Restless. Um, uh, what else did I do? I did a bunch of stuff. Um, you, uh, you filmed a scene with Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield. Oh yeah, I did a uh, I did a uh, special with him in, in <laughs> he's he's an interesting guy uh, in Las Vegas and uh, we had a great time actually it was really fun they flew me out there and uh, uh, we we shot that and uh, yeah that was that was really a fun fun shoot. Okay, okay. Um, are you what are you working on currently right now at the moment? I'm working on a lot of games that I can't talk about unfortunately, but we're also I just finished directing and doing the lead voice uh, of Jigen in. Lupin the third part one and now we are recording and working on Lupin the third part six which I play uh, Jigen in as well and the movie just came out Lupin the third uh, the the first which is a beautiful CGI movie which was shown in theaters and you can see it on Amazon and I adapted that I adapted the script for that and played Jigen in that as well Oh, I noticed also um, I recognize your voice from Digimon you played my oldest Mon. my oldest Mon and Edamon Edamon, I, baby. Oh, 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 oh. I really love my oldest mon. Like that was a really wicked villain. Yes. Well, my oldest mon was basically my Dracula without the accent, because I did Dracula on stage for many years, and uh, so I brought a lot of that to my oldest mon. Was it true you were also in the um, anime ad anime adaptation of Tuma Dracula? Uh, that one doesn't sound familiar, but like I say, I've done over 600, so it's hard to remember them all. To be honest with you. A lot of people will come up to the booth and say, oh, I loved you and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, was I in that? And yes, I was in it. I just don't remember it. I, I totally understand. Well, wow, that's cool, man, that you're doing all those things. Um, I also heard a rumor that you also run your own voice acting school. Uh, my own school? Or I don't voice, know, voice I don't. acting camp. Once in a while, I will, uh, I will do some classes on. I've done uh, maybe three of them online and uh, I've done a couple of them in person. It's not something I do a lot of just because I don't have a lot of time to do them to be honest with you but you know I think that uh, I think that the people that come to the to my classes I think they learn a lot and I think it's really helpful for the people that want to be in this business so yeah. Okay 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 well here's the thing like I, I truly appreciate that you're here because I only want to interview voice actors like you I'm, I'm not too fond of the guys that came after you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Who needs those guys that came after us? And that's all I'm going to say on camera, not off. <laughs> uh, so, besides the loop on the third 3D CG, is there anything else you're working on besides that? I am working on, a, like I said, a bunch of new games right now that I really sadly can't talk about. A bunch of new games. So, And I've got some really great characters and great parts. Um, but some really, really cool stuff's coming out, and uh, I'm, I'm very excited about. It. There's one thing I would like to talk about. It's, it's, a, it's a short movie, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an original animated thing called uh, uh, Dixon Mason, and I play uh, Dixon Mason, and he's a uh, private eye, and the whole, the whole thing's very noir, and it's a very, very cool animation. I'm really happy to be part of that. Um, animated black, white, and gray, or is it animated? No, it's with in color, but it's very muted colors. But it, it just it looks incredible, and the music is great, and uh, we're we're just uh, really excited about that coming out. Okay, okay. When is it coming out? I uh, I hope hope soon. I don't really know, to be honest with you. They're still working on it, so you know you never know on these things. Okay, okay. It's, it's, a, it's a process. All right, gotcha. Well, Richard, I just got to say thank you so much for your time and energy. Uh, I'm sure your wife, when she sees this, she's going to be like, oh, yeah, you were interviewed. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm just, I don't I don't she'll be so happy about the wet panties part, but. Uh. <laughs> sure, because she knows how valuable you are to her. <laughs> yes. It's the truth, though. Think about it. If you couldn't do that, would you still have a job? Uh, no. 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 Uh, definitely not. Uh, Richard. It's my job description that I have to do that, so. Exactly. Richard, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thank and you. I hope to see you here next year too. I hope so too. That you know, this has been this was my first time here, and this has been a great convention. The people have been super nice. Everyone's been lovely, 
And uh, it's just been so much fun. And I hope that uh, they do have me back next year. I would love to come out. Definitely, man. Because I want to hear, uh, um, hear your progress, what's new, what's not new. All that. <laughs> I'm just nervous as fucking out. I'm, <laughs> you know, this is my first time meeting you. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to not geek the fuck out, you know? <laughs> geek the fuck out it's okay <laughs> no not on camera Again, i don't judge i don't judge <laughs> okay okay well guys thanks for watching uh special thanks to richard Epcar for being my tallest guest on the program that's right. um i hope to see you guys again here next year that's a wrap until next time bye bye